Welcome to online service equipping you for victory. And we are studying about faith, the life of faith, how to live by faith. God has given us world overcoming faith. So we rule the world in the metron that we live in. You, you cannot rule the globe, but your world has a metron around your life. And that's where your faith operates. And of course, if all of us work our faith together in a corporate way, our, our metron is bigger. And eventually the kingdom of God will fill the earth. The knowledge of the Lord, knowledge of the glory of God will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. And so we're talking about an individual walk of faith. But we are living as the body of Christ and your life joinings will have a, a greater metron and your church will have a vision of a metron. Your leader will give you a vision of a metron and we as the body in that church in that local assembly will work with that vision. You have your private life and then also tied into that, your private life tied into the vision of the local church that comes from your man of God and then that works together. I want to read a verse of scripture and share some powerful truths about faith what is faith? That's what we want to talk about tonight from the heart of God. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 gives us a definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is a powerful spiritual force. It is substance. It is spiritual substance. And it is evidence. But you cannot see it. And one of the great examples that I can give you in the natural, because all truth is parallel, in the natural we have electricity. And electricity comes from a substation into a DB box into the building. And then from the building, DB box, it comes and it's connected onto lights and different equipment that we use. Now, that electricity, if you misuse it, it can kill you. If you use it correctly, it's very productive. And it is the same as faith. There are conduits that bring forth electricity to where your equipment is and then there's a plug your equipment is designed to work with electricity it's like if you look at a sewing machine you see someone using a sewing machine they just have a foot pedal and as they press it it just runs not like the olden days where they had to use the pedal and do it by hand but that machine is designed, it's got a motor, the electricity feeds that motor, and then all the, the one who uses it just has to guide it. But if you look, there's a cord that goes into a socket on the wall. Now, if someone puts that switch off, even though that sewing machine has all the parts, has a motor to work it, if there's no power coming through, that machine won't work. And so that's a powerful illustration of how faith, faith is a powerful force. Faith can move mountains in your life. That's how the saying goes. So now in Hebrews 11, 1 in the Amplified Bible says, now faith is. First of all, when we talk about faith, it's always in the present tense. Now, of course, now may not be quite correct in using that as a present tense. While the word now is present tense, but it's actually meaning because faith is. Because something was said in the previous chapter, in light of that, now faith. 
So we can't use the word now there, but the word is, is present tense. And so now faith is, even if you can't use that word now, the word is means now. So is is now, <laughs> and now is is. And so faith always operates in the present tense. Now faith is the substance. It's a spiritual substance, which is force of things, things, things hoped for. Hope is always in the future. But faith is the evidence that what is in the future can be now. Your faith can go and bring that into the present tense and make it a present reality for you. And now faith is. The Amplified says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. And so, I like the term, it's a title deed. So faith is the title deed. Now, you can, you, you can go and, and buy a property without seeing that property. And you can get that property transferred to your name without you seeing that property. And then you can go and take possession of it when it's transferred on your name. But before you actually take possession of it, your title deed takes the place of that property. And so faith is like that. It's your title deed that it's yours. Even before you see it in manifestation and even before you take possession of it, it takes the place of the manifestation before the manifestation. And once you have the manifestation, you have knowledge of the manifestation. You don't need faith now to believe it's there. You know it. So knowledge is, that type of knowledge is, is higher than faith. Because you have it. You have knowledge, this is mine. In manifestation. It's real now. So it's very powerful. So the word substance Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Substance actually means that which has actual existence. It's the nature of a person or a thing, a real being. being it's, it's, it's a substructure. It's a foundation. So faith is a foundation of what you believe in God for. It's what will bring it onto that foundation if you don't have faith. And so it does exist. Faith does exist. Make no mistake. Faith does exist. Now the most powerful forces in the universe, and they designed to work congruently, is faith, hope, and love. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. Now abided faith, hope, and and love these three, but the greatest of these is love. So God has designed that faith and hope and love work together for you in your life. And so when we say, you walk by faith and not by sign, it's also meaning that hope and love is included in this. So God's not designed because they say the greatest is love, you see, God is love, and so he is the greatest. But God has never designed for you to choose love above faith and faith above hope or to separate those forces. You know that God is love. It's his very nature, so it's, it's greater. It's the greatest. Faith, uh, love is the greatest. But God has designed it that it works congruently together. Now, faith is a spiritual force that works. We've looked at faith works as a seed that grows into a big tree. We've also looked at faith is a servant that can work for you. 
But faith is a force, like electricity is a force that can work things for you too. It's a power force. And it's a substance of things hoped for. Now hope is, is, is the picture. It's a blueprint of your faith, of what your faith can, can work on. Now the most beautiful illustration that I know of, that I use when I teach on faith, hope and love, is the, 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 the motor car. Your motor car is like, like your faith. It's designed to take you from point A to point B, wherever you want to go. But you need a road map. If you want to go from one city to another city, you've got to know the highways of how to get there, and you're going to need to know the streets that will take you to your destination. So the road map or the GPS would be your hope. Because you also can see a map of a country or another city and you know vaguely, but you don't know the roads. So the GPS can tell you the exact roads. So your direction and your destination is your hope. So hope is a blueprint of the faith. If you're going to put up a building, you need a blueprint plan of how you're going to build. And so your hope will give you hope in the Word of God, faith in the Word of God, love resides in the Word of God. All these spiritual forces reside in the Word of God. And so you get your faith, you get the blueprint, the plan for your life, the call of God for your life, and how you're going to get there is all in the Word of God. Everything for you is in the Word of God. And then the love of God is who God is. So back to the illustration of a vehicle. You're going to drive this vehicle. And so you've got a, a good vehicle. It's an excellent vehicle. It can get you to your destination anytime. There's no question about that. But you're going to have to get skilled in how to drive it. That's why in the natural you need a driver's license. And so in the realm of the spirit you need to get skilled in how to use your faith. Otherwise you're going to have faith accidents. Like if you let a child drive a motor car, you'll have motor car accidents. And so f faith is a powerful force. It's, it's like that motor car. But you need petrol in the motor car. The petrol is like love. It's what causes that car to go. And love works the faith. It causes the faith to work. And love is God. The faith belongs to God, but love is God. God is love, but he works my faith. And so God works his faith. And we live a life of union with God. And so the love of God is a petrol of the faith. And the hope is a blueprint, what you want to achieve, where you want to go, what God calls you to have or to do. And so those three powerful illustrations, uh, the illustrations of those forces that work together. Now take note, I said the car is faith. I did not say that faith is the hope. The hope is the blueprint. I did not say the car is the petrol. It's three different things, but they work together. And you're going to have to drive this car. You're going to have to know the direction. And you're going to have to make sure that your tank is full of petrol, of love. Now, once you're skilled in doing that, the just shall live by faith. You understand that you can walk through any circumstance. You can walk through the fires being made seven times hotter. You can be more than a conqueror. You can rule the world, rule the flesh, and rule the devil. But you're going to have to get skilled in how to use your faith. And that is why we're equipping you for victory. Now, Faith resides in the Word of God. 
faith and hope and love. You'll find all these spiritual forces. They reside in the word of God. God has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called you unto glory and virtue. Excellent. And so God gave us the Bible, the word of God. And he gives us everything that we need to live a godly life. We're talking about faith, hope, and love. And so that is in here. And so when we talk about faith, it resides in the word of God. And very often, as you look at this force called faith and hope and love, it's almost like used interchangeably with the word of God. In fact, the Bible teaches us that God is love. But the Bible also teaches us that God and his word is one. And so we see this in the Bible. And as you study it, you understand these powerful things. So faith resides in the word of God and faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and it says in Hebrews 11 verse 2 for by it by faith the elders obtained a good report you can get a good report out of your life through a life of faith and then it says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which appear. Wow, that's, that's the first thing your faith must do, is to give you understanding that this natural realm that is susceptible to your five physical senses are not made out of things that are susceptible to your physical senses. They're not made out of things which appear. They are made by the word of God, and they're made by faith. Now in Genesis 1 and verse 1, it tells us how God created. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Wow. So God is a spirit. That's who God is, his spirit. And out of spirit came everything that is natural. So everything that's natural finds its beginnings in spirit form. Even science can tell us, modern science tells us everything that's natural in its basic form is a sea of energy. And so we understand that now by faith. Faith is a spiritual force and, and hope is direction. Love is a petrol. And yet you cannot see these things. And they help you to believe and to live this type of life from the spirit, from heaven into the natural. And we see that God, who is spirit, is creator. But in John chapter 1 and verse 1 to verse 4, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Wow! So John goes back to the beginning and he says in the beginning that means before God created there was what was before God created there was the word and then the word was with God and then the word was God and so just to understand you join those two beginnings in the beginning, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John 1, 1 tells us, and the word was God. And so verse 2 in John 1, verse 2 tells us the same was in the beginning with God. And then verse 3, all things were made by him. It brings a gender into the word of God as though the word of God was a person we know that is speaking of Jesus Christ in his pre-incarnate state his name in revelations called the word of God and so 
All things were made by him and without him there wasn't anything that was made. And then it says, in him, in the word, in Christ, was life. And the life was the light of men. So when you get the life of God in you, you've got light to see where you can go by faith. You've got this journey and you've got the spiritual force called faith. Now, if you go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 uh, to verse 3, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. That simply means in times past, God spoke audibly to the prophets. That was the word of God. But in these last days, he had spoken unto us by his son. And then it goes on to say, whom he had appointed heirs of all, heir of all things. And then it also goes, by whom he also made the worlds. Wow. So Jesus Christ, in his pre-incarnate state, in his life on the earth, in his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, is God speaking to us. So Jesus Christ is the living word of God. Oh, Jesus, I can sense his presence when I'm speaking like this to you. That the word of God is a spiritual entity. It's breathing. The word of God's got life in it. And the word of God is Jesus Christ. That's why when you study the Word of God and you have fellowship with the Word of God, it's something sacred. Our fellowship is with God. Our fellowship is with His Son. And our fellowship is with one another because we're all in this life. And it's giving all of us light. And so it goes on to say in verse 3, verse 2, it tells us He's the heir of all things. All things belong to Him. We are joined as with Jesus. We get our inheritance from the word of God. And then it also says he made the worlds. When you got the word of God, you've got the one who created. And then verse 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory, Jesus, the word, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So, dear friends, as I draw this message to a close this morning, this evening, you must know when you're dealing with faith, hope, and love, you're dealing with the Word of God. That's what you're dealing with. It's the Word of God. When you're dealing with God and Jesus Christ, you're dealing with the Word of God. So Jesus' entire life throughout eternity is the word of God, but was given to us in written form, in printed form, so that we can start with the word in, in written form, and then we come into a place where the word of God takes on life, and is a living entity. So when we feed on the bread of life, we're feeding off Jesus Christ, the tree of life. The more you feed on the word of God, the more faith comes into you. The more you feed on the word of God, the more powerful this hope is within you. The more you feed on the word of God, the more the love of God, the more petrol comes into you. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God has got everything you need in life to give you a life of total victory. And so, God created the worlds by speaking faithful words that had pictures or images in them. The Word of God is God. God has every spiritual force within Him. In the Word of God is the life of God. In the Word of God is the anointing of the Spirit of God. And in the word of God is the plans God has for you, visions and dreams. So it's quite fine to say that the parent force 
that created the world was faith in the word of God. And this faith in the word of God, the word of God and faith, upholds everything that God has created. And therefore, the word of God and faith will always cause creation to respond to the one that speaks Jesus Christ from a position of Jesus, from a mind of Jesus, from words of Jesus, and acts as Jesus. Creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And I trust, dear friends, that you have been encouraged in equipping you for victory, that we've pulled back the curtain by the Spirit of God, that you would get some form of understanding, that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, and in this Word of God is the faith of God. So the first thing that faith will do as you hear the Word of God is to get understanding that the worlds, the successive ages, are framed by the Word of God, so that the things that are made, the things that are susceptible to the five physical senses, were not made out of things that appear. God did not need some physical substance to create a natural reality. And that's a first step of faith, that the Word of God is your total source of faith, hope, love, of everything you need. If you live by every word, that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And I'm closing now. Every word is Jesus Christ. If you live by Jesus Christ, you are victorious in life. If you live by Jesus Christ, then everything that Jesus Christ represents can be your experience. And I want to encourage you during this lockdown and during even when lockdown is lifted off, Make the word of God number one in your life. Understand that you do not live by natural things alone, but your spirit, your mind, and your body needs the word of God. And you will never be sorry if you put God's word first place. So the word of God is God. The word of God is Jesus Christ eternally. The word of God is faith, hope, and love for you. You've got the word of God. You've got everything in life in Jesus' name. Will you allow me to pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you today as I've shared the word of God, that fellowship divine is taking place, sweet communion between God and your people, through the medium of God's word, that heaven and earth is, is intermingling now, Lord, and that in the name of Jesus, that there's an intermingling of God and humanity, bringing forth an intermingled spirit of God men and God women in the earth. And I, I thank you for this revelation. And I bless your people now that this word is sealed in their hearts, the word is not far from them. It's in their mouth and in their heart. The same word that I'm speaking to them. And in the name of Jesus, I come up against this corona, this code of 19, this virus. And we bring it under our feet in the name of Jesus. And we let the word of God uphold it there under our feet. And it will not destroy you. It will not deplete you. You will not lose. But you're a winner in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for this, Father, in the name of Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen and amen. Wow, 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 wow.
Whew, Jesus, my God, my God, how God loves us that he can share himself with us. Now, if you would like to sow a seed, because you're just so grateful for revelation, and you're sowing the seed because revelation brings forth the manifestation. Make no mistake, because Jesus is building on that word. And so you can do your transfer, and the details are coming up on the screen. Sow your seed. Very important to sow financial seed too, because finances is a medium of exchange in this world for goods and service. In the kingdom of God, faith is a medium of exchange. But in the world we live in, money is a medium of exchange for goods and service. Sow your seed, and somehow God will work this together with revelation in your life. So listen to this powerful song, and I'll be back in a moment to pray and cause God's blessing to come upon the seed that you've sown. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together and sing. The tide is turning. The tide is turning. The water is rising. Turning in my favor. Cause my God is able.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for tithes and offerings, Lord. We thank you that everything you call a seed has a DNA in it. And you have given us the responsibility to put a DNA. Your word says you cause the seed to grow. So we receive the seeds, the financial seeds, sown into this ministry. And I speak life into that seed and light into that seed that it'll produce after its kind. It'll produce a God desires from your people's hearts a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God richly bless you. We see you on Sunday morning at half past eight in your home. Bye-bye now. Your spirit flow